This is the Doctor. And there is an ideal that defines the Doctor perhaps more than anything else. Compassion. An insatiable drive to protect life wherever and whenever life is in danger. Sometimes the Doctor doesn't succeed. Sometimes it ends in despair. And in these moments, the Doctor's humanity is exposed. Raw, vulnerable, tragic. What if I told you that in the vast expanse of the Doctor Who universe, there was another character like this? And one who also loves a good old fight! And what if I told you that this character was a Cyberman? This is the story of junior cyber leader Croton. The Cyberman with a soul. And just to get it out of the way, no, he's got nothing to do with these fellas. But yes, by the request of one of my wonderful patrons over on Patreon, I will be covering Doctor Who and the Crotons at some point in the near future. Stay tuned. I very briefly talked about Croton a while ago as a simple matter of housekeeping. You see, Croton is from the planet Telos, and I was just so happening to cover all things Telos for a series of videos. Telos first appeared in 1967's Tomb of the Cybermen, and it was the base of operations for many a nefarious Cybermen activity. The Cybermen would lie dormant in their sinister tombs on this planet for 500 years. At some point, they had subjugated Telos from the hapless, innocent Cryons, and Telos was the last bastion of the Cybermen army during the Great Cyber Wars. Even after its destruction, the drifting remnant of this world harboured a mighty tomb, so powerful that if activated, it could awaken an uncountable number of Cybermen across the galaxy. So, it's probably a good job that that didn't happen. But, perhaps lesser known to the history of this barren, hostile world, was a time of staggering prosperity, of sprawling cities teeming with life, an advanced utopia to rival the greatest imaginable in the realms of technological advancement. And all of this is apparent in just a few small images. Who knows where in the Telos timeline this was set? <laughs> Dates. As far as this story is concerned, like so many other formalities, it, well, I'll explain later, because on gawking wondrously at these finely drawn panels, I had completely overlooked something more important happening in the story of Croton, something that I eventually found positively mind-blowing. So I'm about to go ultra nerdy here. You see, I think that these Cybermen that you see in Throwback are in fact the ultimate hybridization of every single type of Cyberman that we have seen in TV Doctor Who up until this point, 1979. You got the names and ranks of individual Cybermen as used by the Mondasians in the 10th planet. You have the planet Telos, so that's the Cyber Telosians covered. In terms of physique, I think they're faintly reminiscent of the wheelies. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch. But in every other regard, they basically look exactly like the early cyber faction as seen in the invasion. With the exception, of course, of the numbers on their chest. Croton having the number one there. Which I think is a clever feature because you can tell one Cyberman from the other when reading the comic, which is important because they're all different characters. And some of them have those upside down black triangles on top of their faces, which Croton has as well because he's cool. But here is the key element to these particular Cybermen and that is their emotional output, their exuberance, their fanaticism. There's a kind of charisma to it, and that can only come from our good friends, the Cyber Nomads, a scene in The Revenge of the Cybermen. So if you read this comic and you think these aren't really like Cybermen from TV Doctor Who, I think they are, albeit a strange mashup. It's what comes next that's a little different. Something that's a little... Oh, I completely forgot! We did it! We did it! We hit the 20 Patreon mark! That means I can go on and do the Dalek story. Thank you so much for getting me there. We're actually past there now. 
So after this round of Cybermen videos, I am going to do the Chosen Chimp deep dive into the one where it all started, Doctor Who and the Daleks. I'm very grateful for all you guys getting me there. And now I'm going to ask, just carry on. Visit patreon.com slash chosen chimp and become a distinguished follower for one pound a month where you can request your classic Doctor Who story for review. And for those who have done so already, let me assure you that I, I, that, <laughs> that I have not forgotten. They are on the list and I will get to them. It's just a bit of a busy season. Cybermen videos, Dalek videos, and of course, at the end of November, Doctor Who's on. So a lot to cover and what a great time to be a follower of the Chosen Chimp. Anyway, sorry, lost me train of thought there. How very human of me. In 1979, Doctor Who magazine, known back then as a Marvel publication by the name of Doctor Who Weekly, ran a series of non-Doctor backup strips written by Steve Moore and Steve Dillon. Moore in particular was set for big things in the world of Doctor Who comics, cutting his teeth in the backup strips before moving into the main Doctor Who comic stories later down the line. Together, Moore and Dillon created a Cybermen story from the Cybermen perspective, and featuring the Doctor only in opening narration for each of the comic's free installments. He's glaring at us, the reader, like the thing happening in the story is our fault, which I find a little unsettling. Mind you, this is the fourth Doctor, and he would occasionally do that in the TV shows as well. Anyway, behold, throwback, the soul of a Cyberman. A Cyberman story unlike any other. It begins with the planet Mondaran a planet in ruins just months after its conquest by the Cybermen. And a small group of human resistance fighters are making what should be an otherwise smooth conquest somewhat troublesome. A frustrated cyber leader going by the name of Tork calls on reinforcements from Telos, and this is where we are introduced to the somewhat troubled junior cyber leader, Croton. Junior cyber leader Croton is a little different, a little more observant, with the apparent ability to contemplate. So much so that his more militant Cybermen colleagues simply wonder if he's functioning wrong. And maybe he is. Whereas this particular batch of Cybermen are positively fanatical about the subjugation of humans and the sapping of Mondaran for its resources, Croton has bigger, deeper questions. And humans, alongside their unwillingness to conform, seem to intrigue him. As does the brutality through which his Cybermen colleagues carry out their own duties. So much so, that he begins to interfere with their violent activities. Particularly confusing to junior cyber leader Croton is the rebel Willaway, who, despite facing imminent pain and death at the hands of his Cybermen captors, refuses to divulge information that would jeopardize his human friends. This is the first of one of many intriguing panels in this comic, as the idea of freedom and emotion plays on Croton's mind in a way that it simply shouldn't what with him being a Cyberman and all. On discovering the human rebel hideout, Croton substitutes violence for diplomacy, introducing us the reader to images of an emotionally vexed Cyberman character. Calling all comic book experts. Just what is going on here? I find these drawings so interesting. Besides the black markings on Croton's face, is this really different to this? And yet this is a face immediately evoking empathy. Maybe it's the curvature at the top of the headpiece conveying a frown. Maybe it's that curvy thing inside his mouth that might sort of look like teeth or a tongue, giving us the feeling of something more human. Or maybe it's just the dialogue of these panels adding context. Whatever the case, it just works. And readers can expect a lot more images like this as the story progresses, and as Croton gets more and more disheartened with the bullish Cyberman ethos, leading him to question the very point of his own existence, as moral ambiguity surrounds him at every turn. Humans, willing to betray their own kind for the sake of their own richness and well-being, what's that about? 
Neither the complex behaviour of humans or the cold logic of Cybermen make any sense to Croton anymore. It causes him to go a few philosophical rounds with Pendar the Rebel on the very nature of humanity. At which point, this Cyberman does the unthinkable. He exercises mercy, setting Pendar the human free from cyber captivity. It's kind of funny how Pendar contemplates bashing him on the head with a rock, but then decides not to, and then chats to his lady colleague about what happened in the entire time Croton's just sitting there in a state of defeat. It's easy to forget at this point that this is even a Cyberman. And then, Croton snaps turning on his own kind just moments before discovering that he was once a human himself. As the comic itself describes it, Croton is a man between two worlds, able to fit seemingly in neither. But that does not stop him from fighting the good fight. This three-part story ends with Croton helping the human rebels escape and battling through the army of Cybermen with no other desire than to do what he now realises is the right thing, the compassionate thing. After getting the humans to a safe refuge, Croton chooses to remove himself and his ship, sending himself on a one-way trip through the depths of space, alone and supposedly drained of power. And that, distinguished followers, is one of the best images of a Cyberman I think I have ever seen. But of course, this isn't the last we see of this wandering soul, and poor Croton just can't seem to catch a break. For what is probably the most hard-hitting Croton story, the duo of Moore and Dylan would revive Croton just half a year later in March 1980 for a two-part story titled Ship of Fools, which starts off resembling something of a fun caper, good luck with that. Whilst passing through a strange miasmic cloud, Croton's ship lands aboard a much larger pleasure cruise ship, full of all kinds of eccentric and refreshingly non-judgmental types. Still weary from his experience on Mondaran, Croton is a little confused at the apparent purposelessness of the never-ending party atmosphere of this cruise ship. Time has frozen, and in these forebodingly dark interiors, everybody seems to be repeating the same activities over and over. The Flying Dutchman is of course that legendary ghost ship that was doomed to sail the seas forever, and this cruise ship probably shouldn't have called itself that. It is stuck in a literal time warp. Having been adrift and lost himself, Croton can sort of relate, but being the reborn Cyberman with a soul of action that he is, he tries to resolve this conundrum by flying the ship out of the cloud, much to the delight of the passengers who by this point want nothing more than to return home. But in doing so, Croton condemns his crew to a swift death, meaning once again he is broken and alone. For almost 20 years, audiences had nothing but this image to signify the end of Croton's story. By the way, I am aware that this strip at the very least was at one point colorized not 100% sure when that happened, only that I've seen evidence of it online. Aside from the fact that I'm taking all the images for this video from the Glorious Dead compendium, I just prefer this in black and white. I think it works better stylistically, and it's also more reminiscent of the black and white glory years of Cybermen in TV Doctor Who, my personal favourite era of Cybermen adventures. Colour or black and white? What's your favourite? Drop it in the comments there's no wrong answer. Also, shout out to Anthony Lamb's cosmically sexy rendition of Croton alongside all these other Cybermen, as featured in the Cybermen Ultimate Comic Strip Collection, which in turn was taken from Gav Rymel's equally sexy 3D rendition. Brilliant stuff. I'm definitely going to get this compendium at some point, I mean, how can I not? But what I'm not going to do is bend it and press it onto my printer scanner, so yeah, 
1999, Croton found a new lease of life in a series of comics no longer penned by Steve Moore or Steve Dillon, the first of which saw Croton adopt a newfound attitude, with nothing if not his first for combat returning. This is the first in a brand new set of Croton comics. This particular one is called Unnatural Born Killers and was created by Adrian Salmon of Cybermen fame. It's worth noting that what followed in this new era of Croton stories was not really to the liking of Steve Moore, who would state in an interview that the character was too much of a departure from the original character that he created in the late 70s and early 80s. Of course, with this essentially being his baby, you cannot feel anything other than respect for Moore's dismay. It was his creation. It was taken and changed into something contrary to its original intention, so it's hard to deny that this frustration is well placed. However, as an audience member looking in from the outside, I think it works. I actually love Unnatural Born Killers. It's basically Croton single-handedly kicking the ass of an entire Sontaran army, narrating his thought process as he goes and taking multiple opportunities to parody his now long-discarded Cybermen protocols. Yes, it's different to the somber darkness of Throwback and Ship of Fools, and again, I fully respect that some may dislike the change, but I think there's definitely some hidden cleverness in this one. It shows that during the gap between this and this, something happened. Our troubled Cyberman has filled out. He now seems well-travelled, able to fight adeptly with what appears to be a metal bow staff. His sorrow and defeat as seen in his last story has now metamorphosed into a kind of controlled rage. No longer is Croton taking his bad experiences lying down, but instead using those experiences to strengthen his resolve going forward and fight the good fight. I can really feel the character development in this. In my mind, a natural born killers is a triumphant return done right and this same level of rejuvenated brazen attitude in our new leveled up croton continues in the follow-up story company of thieves and from this point onward the story of croton lay in the hands of writer scott gray and editor alan barnes also of cybermen comic fame capable hands as history shows it's in the company of thieves where croton finally meets the doctor definitely a lot more humour in this one, with the Doctor and his comic book companion Izzy Sinclair trying to get their TARDIS back from pirates and mad scientists aplenty. When the Doctor meets the wisecracking Croton, he thinks what you would think when confronting a Cyberman, and then he gives him a big old electric shock, but is equally quick to realise that this fella is not like the others. Company of Thieves definitely doesn't have the emotional depths of other Croton stories preceding it, but it still has Croton go into whatever means necessary to protect whoever he deems a friend, which now happens to be the Doctor and his companion. Croton's love and respect for the value of life is as present here as it was in all previous stories, as well as a growing sense of pure selflessness. The story ends with him saving Izzy and the Doctor like a true soup. And just like that, his lonely days are behind him. In the year 2000, Croton gave his last ever appearance, save for the odd cameo. But for all intents and purposes, this was not the end of Croton. The Glorious Dead is pretty wild. A culmination of a long-running story arc involving the Eighth Doctor and Izzy, where entire worlds and civilizations are ravaged, planet Earth is near enough ruined, and the Doctor faces one of his oldest and deadliest foes. Readers can expect multiversal madness, some genre-spanning comic book pop culture wink-wink-nudge-nudges, and some neat references to classic episodes of TV Doctor Who. There's even a mention of Croton being like a Borg. I bet you all like that one, eh? I read the comments. Anyway, it turns out that Croton's role in this comic is more pivotal than he and audiences first thought. With an ancient being prophesizing that two adversaries will face each other to control the Omniverse, no pressure, the Master naturally thinks it refers to him and the Doctor. Well, he would, wouldn't he? But it's not. It's actually Croton and this guy, Sato an immortal samurai warrior featured in earlier comics who has been manipulated by the Master to do all the groundwork, a troubled soul in his own right and one who quite simply took the wrong path. This is Croton's toughest battle yet, with him being put through the ringer in a way not depicted in any other story. 
But this isn't the only thing happening with Croton in The Glorious Dead. More substantial to the Cyberman with a soul are the conversations he has with Izzy. You see, when our heroes first land on the soon-to-be-ravaged planet Paradox, Croton is offered the chance to try out a mnemonic crystal, a device that can revive fading memories and at first he declines. Once again, I really like his newfound ability to be funny in these panels. In this regard, he finds a kindred spirit in the form of Izzy, who, as some may know, also has a really tough time of it. They both agree that unearthing the past may be too painful to bear. But by the end of this battle, Croton does interact with the crystal, and the memories of his past life before cyber conversion come flooding back in all their bittersweet and agonizingly beautiful glory. His wife, his children, and his former human self. In doing so, Croton saves reality and is never to be seen again. It's never really explained how or when the human that Croton once was was chosen for cyber conversion. And it's never explained how it was him of all Cybermen who were able to break their programming and become the kind, compassionate, caring, free thinking individual that they did. So, given everything that we now know about Doctor Who and given everything that modern Doctor Who has added or the substance that it has provided, you might ask the question, is there really a place anywhere for a character like Croton? Well, here's what I learnt. That question just doesn't matter. So anyway, that thing that I said I found positively mind-blowing, feeling, very important. All good fiction needs to make you feel. If it fails in this endeavour, then it's probably trash. If it succeeds, then it's gold dust. And the gauntlet of Croton Comics, from its humble origins all the way to the final panel, pulls out all the stops to strike that emotional connection with the reader. And the power with which it does so cannot be understated. It's never clean cut. It's peppered with sadness from beginning to end. And the level of compassion and kindness that Croton gives to the reader is in keeping with the very very ethics of Doctor Who. Maybe it would be nice to see more from Croton in the future, or maybe they did the right thing closing the book when they did. But this story is three-dimensional, unforgettable, and timeless. All because of the way that it conveys feeling. Us humans can't really relate to being a Cyberman, a fictional, ruthless killing machine on a faraway world in a distant future. But what we can relate to is this, this, and this. Corny as it might sound, I think there's a little bit of this character in all of us. <laughs>